morning. Today we are in the GT3 RS, just warming up. It's kind of <laughs> foggy winter day, so it's a little bit slippy outside. But today I want to talk about this guy here, which you probably can't see on this video. The manual, manual gearbox, three pedals, heel and toe, that sort of thing. I've had a few comments. If you know how to heel and toe, stop watching now. It's probably not gonna be that interesting. Might be get some GT3 RS noises. Other than that, I've had loads of comments saying, Sam, can you just show me a little bit of footwork and things like that, which, yeah. So I thought I would give it a go. Why do you need to heel and toe? What is heel and toe? What's the point of it? Well, the idea is say you're in fourth gear going 100 miles an hour and you change down to third gear. To maintain the same wheel speed, third gear would have to be revving really quite high. So say you were in 4,000 revs in fourth, you change down to third, you need to be doing sort of seven to, to maintain the same speed. So when you change down and you lift up the clutch, if you're not in the right rev range, your wheels have to, like the engine and everything has to speed up and that can chirp your wheels. You may have found if you've done a particularly like early change down and then lifted off, you get that kind of like jumping feeling. And on track, if you're near the limit, it can up, you can lose the rear, that sort of stuff. It's also just mechanical sympathy for the car. Matching the revs, makes the life a little bit easier for the engine and it sounds it sounds good As you'll notice on old paddle gearbox they go like run 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 so same sort of thing i rev match pretty much every single downshift the whole time i don't know when the only time i probably wouldn't do it is if i'm rolling up to a set of lights or something and you're going to be stationary so you can just leave the clutch in and then clonk it into first first is a notoriously tricky one to get down into but the others all good. Off we go, we're gonna go warm up the car. Car is now up to temperature, We're sort of ready to go. I have been blipping all the, all the way here, but um, we've got cup twos in the winter, which is a little, a little bit slippy, but they're, they're okay. When As soon as they get warm, they're great as well. Now, the two things you need are shoes. Shoes is one that people, you may not necessarily think about, but you need something. I'm just wearing some like old Vans I've got. Um, similar sort of shoes that I've, wear for driving, like Converse's, any kind of small, kind of fitted shoe. I like quite sort of slightly soft undersides so that you can sort of feel the pedals, but my race boots are really solid, which kind of weirded me out the first time, but I don't actually own a manual race car, but I'm sure they're, they're pretty good. Um, so what you need is something that fits your foot quite well and you've got control over all aspects of your foot. And then the second thing you need is you need a manual car. Now, some cars are a lot easier to heel and toe than other cars. And the more sporty the car, if it's from Porsche, someone like that, it's probably more set up to do so. Uh, my A3 I had ages ago, was really difficult to do it just because of the spacing of the pedals. What you want, or when you adapt, is when you've pressed the brake pedal down to a decent amount, let's say you're on track, they're all kind of optimized for track. So you press the brake pedal down to a decent amount. You then want your pedals to sort of line up. That's basically kind of where it's at. If you press the brake pedal loads, you're then accelerate the pedal, the throttle pedal, is just right next to it. 
And what you then do, so you changing down, let's say I'm in fourth, braking hard, foot's on the brake, right foot on the brake, left foot on the clutch. You then blip, so you sort of roll your foot like this. You just, it's the side, I don't really know why it's, I think it's heel toe is some old thing, because you don't actually use the heel. Uh, I think it was when they had the, the pedals the wrong way around, they had throttle in the middle and all that sort of stuff. But you roll off the side of your foot, like, like this, onto the throttle pedal, and I'll, I'll show you a little video. And then you give it a little blip whilst trying to maintain optimum pressure on the brakes. So, clutch in, brake, braking heavily, clutch in, blip, and then as you blip, go through the gate, and then let the clutch out. Obviously, I'm stationary, so <laughs> car's gonna stall. But that's basically it. And different cars, you have to do more, like you might have to move your foot more, like if the pedals aren't set up that well, or if you're just braking a little bit, you're gonna have to roll your foot a lot. Whereas if you're braking a lot, the pedals will be more aligned, and you just a little, little dab. And it's a practice thing. I first tried it, I think, well, properly, I'd say, I'd, when I sort of started to really get it, was driving down to the south of France, uh, down Route Napoleon, and I had my Boxster, and on a road like that, you, on that sort of trip, five hours, six hours of driving, you must probably do a thousand heel toes or something if you're doing it every shift and that's when you if you just try it once you're probably not going to get it but if you do it that many times that's when you get it that's pretty much it of other little techniques would be the first the easiest one is just blipping a downshift without braking so you might be cruising on a motorway and you want to change down to third to overtake or you know you're on a country road you want to change down a gear and then fly past someone just clutch in give it a little blip with your right foot change down third to second or something blip so the process, clutch in, blip, change, lift up. I mean, it's, it's pretty it's pretty kind of self-explanatory, but you just basically just give it a little blip in the middle. In lots of older cars, you have to double, it's like double declutch, which is, it's actually technically better on the engine, I think. And that is, it's the same in fourth, you neutral, change into clutch neutral lift up blip so you blip it in neutral which because it's engaged it helps the engines engine spin up super fast and then you just clutch and drop it in so that one is clutch neutral clutch off blip clutch bound again so it's like a double motion it's just it's that's the technically perfect way to do a <laughs> sort of heel and toe doubly clutching gear change but that's kind of a if you want to have a little bit of fun and just try something different that's another one it is better for it is lots of races say that is the way the way to do it it doesn't take if you're quick it doesn't take much difference time what else that's about it I mean it's a pretty simple thing I think everyone should just give it a go in whatever car you've got, doesn't matter. I think you should be heel and towing if you can, all the time. And definitely, if you're just down changing, you should definitely be blipping your down changes. In whatever car, it just makes it it's better for the engine, it's a smoother drive, it's smoother for your passengers, the braking's more even. And then it's a, a skill that you will build and then use for the rest of your life. Until in about two years, there's no more manual cars and well, that's it, we're all screwed. <laughs> That's about it. And that's it, everyone. I've been for a little fun drive. 
hopefully people that didn't know what heel and toe exactly was because I think the, the terminology is not great but other than that that's it see you next time